John Fetterman's descent into madness continues. And today he appeared with uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, the uh, Israeli prime minister, who is a war criminal. The ICC just applied for arrest warrants for him because he has committed crimes against humanity in Gaza. He is starving an entire population. And uh, John Fetterman thought it was a good idea to go there to lick his boots. You know, he couldn't wait until July 24th, I think, when Netanyahu came here. He's like, no, I've got to go early. Because I have to lick his boots before everyone else. I want to get the first taste. We've been through uh, dire times in these months of uh, anguish war. And during that time, I can say that Israel has had no better friend than Senator John Fetterman. Senator, welcome to Israel. I want to thank you for your, your courageous statements that show moral clarity and moral courage. And you just say it the way it is. And we appreciate this friendship at all times, but especially at these times. So welcome, friend. Welcome. Well, we stand with, this, with Israel through this, and uh, I'm so sorry for what's been done to this nation, but uh, I'm just an honor to be here today. Thank you. All right. And I look forward to visiting you in Washington. Thank you. The 180 that he's done is just remarkable. This is a faster turnaround even than Kirsten Sinema, I'd say. And that's just so embarrassing. Now, on the subject of Netanyahu coming to speak to Congress, this story here in, here in Politico, it's just, it's so, it's fucking ridiculous. No one knows what he's going to say. White House fears mount about Bibi's DC visit. You know, you don't have to invite this war criminal to come speak. But now, Democrats, specifically Hakeem Jeffries and Chuck Schumer, uh, they invited him to speak. And now they all have anxiety because they're like, oh my God, what is he going to say? Is he going to attack Democrats? Maybe you should have thought about that when you joined Republicans to invite this war criminal. And you know what? If he does attack Democrats, you reap what you sow. Don't invite war criminals then. Like, if anything, he should be afraid to set foot on U.S. soil because he should be worried about getting arrested. But you're inviting him to speak, welcoming him like some sort of a fucking hero after he has slaughtered countless civilians. 12,000, 14,000 children, 21,000 missing. And we're going to welcome him into this country and let him address our Congress. And now they're all worried. I mean, stop being a cug. Uninvite him. Say, fuck off. We don't, we don't support this. Tell Democrats to get in line. Boycott this. They won't, though. They won't. Let's just read a little bit of this because I'm curious to know what they're worried about in particular. Because I, I think that initially they expected him to just come here and say genocide good. Israel can do no wrong if you criticize us, you support Hamas. Um, but it seems increasingly clear that, like, he's pretty open about his desire to get Donald Trump elected. Just last week, he threw Biden under the bus because he's trying to help Trump. I feel like this is the most clear thing ever. Netanyahu is a fascist, much like Donald Trump, and he would benefit from a Trump victory. He wants a Trump victory. Sure, Biden has delivered a lot to Netanyahu, given him virtually everything he's asked for aside from 2000 pound bombs just a couple of months ago or a month ago he stopped doing that but you know with trump he gave him even more right he moved the uh, embassy to jerusalem he gave him the golan heights so how much more will trump give him in a second term will he give him gaza will he give him the west bank will he allow them to just completely erase palestine off the map who knows so Netanyahu is a fascist and birds of a feather stick together so he wants trump back in the White House. The fact that Biden doesn't realize this and Democrats don't realize this is absurd to me. Yeah, the Abraham Accords, dirty pirate. That's such a great point that gets that never gets brought up because Republicans were trying to like portray that as, oh, this is Trump brought peace to the Middle East with the Abraham Accords. The Abraham Accords tried to strike a diplomatic relationship uh, between other Arab countries and Israel while bypassing Palestine. So they were basically giving the middle finger to Palestinians, saying, actually, we don't need to come up with a solution. We're just going to form relationships with Israel and Arab countries beforehand. Like, part of the reason why October 7th happened was because of the Abraham Accords. Um, so Trump has delivered to Netanyahu in ways that even Biden couldn't. So Netanyahu wants him to get elected. But Democrats are too stupid to realize that and too, too corrupt to realize that as well.
So the White House has grown anxious about Benjamin Netanyahu's upcoming address to joint session of Congress, uh, believing the Israeli prime minister could use the forum to criticize President Joe Biden for not supporting the retaliation against Hamas in Gaza enough. If you are fearful of that, Joe Biden, and you already suspect you're going to get criticized for not supporting him enough simply because you're not sending him the 2,000 pound bombs as of late, Maybe that's your cue that you should just cut him off entirely. That's inconceivable to Biden, though. Uh, the speech next month could create a diplomatically complicated and politically dicey spectacle for a president running for re-election. Fears among West Wing aides have grown in recent days as Netanyahu has made a series of public statements, including one in a video address delivered in English, accusing the administration of withholding more military aid than has been publicly disclosed. Okay, so this right here is exactly what Republicans wanted. That's why they invited Netanyahu. But Schumer and uh, Hakeem Jeffries, they're like, you know what? We're going to invite him too. We're going to prove that we're actually more pro-Israel. And now the Biden administration is worried because they might come here and shit on Biden in our Congress. Is that not crazy? That the White House is worried about a foreign government's leader attacking him before America's Congress. Like, what a cuck. I would be embarrassed if I was Biden. God damn. And it's funny because I don't know what game Schumer thinks he's trying to play. Maybe he thinks he's playing 4D chess or 5D chess. But a couple of months ago, he called for, you know, Netanyahu to go. He said there should be new elections. But now he's like, mm, actually, he should come and speak <laughs> before Congress. He's not a partner in peace. But you know what? He, sh he still should address a joint session of Congress. It's it's maddening. I, like, I don't know if I'm looking at stupidity or incompetence. It's a distinction without a difference. But goddamn Democrats, we've got to get it together. We've got to get it together. Netanyahu's video this week was not helpful at all, said one senior official who was granted anonymity to speak candidly about internal deliberations. And he could make it far worse up there in front of Congress. Well, yeah, no fucking shit. He doesn't like you. He doesn't like you. Another senior official put it more bluntly. No one knows what he's going to say. I love how they're just like on their toes about what this fucking war criminal has to say. I mean... You don't have to protect him. Have you thought about that? You, you can actually uh, not condemn the ICC when they apply for arrest warrants. You could stop running cover for him since he's doing a genocide. But no, they're just like, okay, we, we're going to invite him. Oh, my God, what is he going to say? What is he going to say? Oh, God, so pathetic. We genuinely do not know what he's talking about, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said this week. She and other aides insisted that only one shipment was paused with no other changes to weapons transfers. So I did a video about that, but Netanyahu's mad that the 2,000-pound bombs aren't being sent. He wants the big boy bombs. And since Biden is not giving him that because he fears that they'll be used in Rafah, um, you know, he's mad that the number of war crimes that he can commit has been kind of minimized right and so now they're they're throwing a temper tantrum and in response america is not cutting him off they're not disinviting him instead the white house is uh walking on eggshells and they're worried if he's going to insult the president or not biden just refuses to do anything to hold netanyahu accountable even minimally and that's so embarrassing you you've got to have a spine now on top of that biden fucked up in a massive way. Um, so he made this tweet here. I'm appalled by the scenes outside of Adas Torah Synagogue in Los Angeles. Intimidating Jewish congregants is dangerous, unconscionable, anti-Semitic, and un-American. Americans have a right to peaceful protest, but blocking access to a house of worship and engaging in violence is never acceptable. Now, in a vacuum, totally agreeable. Protesting outside of a synagogue is unacceptable, uh, because it's not Jewish people who should be protested. It is the government of Israel. That is not the same as Jewish people. I think that you have to be very careful here. Having said that, though, Biden has stripped the entire situation of the necessary context. They were doing a real estate auction in a synagogue. 
So they were selling off land that didn't belong to them, literally. It was theft, and that's what people were protesting. And they would have protested them regardless of where that event was held. But I think that they were probably trying to give themselves cover because this isn't the first time this happened, actually. Walter Masterson, for example, he showed up to a real estate auction where there was a sale of land in, I believe, the West Bank. I don't know where in West Bank, but it was in the West Bank, I think. And um, he wasn't allowed in because he wasn't Jewish. So they were just selling off the land and there was protest there. But I think that they become a little bit more savvy. And it's like, okay, we need cover because we're selling stolen land. There's going to be protests. So let's... Let's try to hide that and not do it in the public. So this account here, push button left. Activists were brutally attacked for protesting a genocidal Zionist group's illegally a discriminatory real estate auction of stolen homes. And the president posts this inflammatory misinformation in response. It can be overstated how craven and dangerous this is. So this is what people were responding to. They were selling property on land that did not belong to them. And Rami here breaks it down. Zionists host the Palestinian land theft event in a synagogue. Zionists claim anti-land theft protesters are anti-Semitic. Zionists attack the protesters, mace them, and get the cops on them. Politicians then condemn anti-Semitism and post reaffirm misinformation. Yeah, that's what Biden did. So we're just... We can't have an honest conversation about this because anytime um, something like this happens, automatically all of the politicians, they just refuse to um, look at the actual details and they condemn the protesters regardless. Strip it of the context, just, okay, well, you know what? They're protesting outside of a synagogue. That's all I need to know. And I think it's it's important to state that there are a lot of folks who are straight up just anti-Semitic, and they're hiding behind that anti-Semitism by using Zionism to shield themselves from criticism. Um, but that's not the majority of the people who are protesting, who are against this genocide. Yes, the optics are bad, but like you can't do something illegal and give yourself cover for said illegal action, which is illegal under international law, by the way, because you're doing it in a synagogue. What's wrong is wrong. What's illegal is illegal. So we, we just, we don't have politicians and pundits who are willing to be honest. And as a result, you know, the, the entire conversation is very skewed. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.